Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Um, what we've got today is a class 150. This is by Graham Farish and this is in the regional railways livery, slightly weathered. Um, although this loco has uh, is missing the corridors that go on the front. Now that's not a biggie for me because I knew I could 3D print them, or to be honest I wasn't actually that fussed of them being on there, but I think uh, I'll show you now because what we're going to go from is this and we're going to go to that okay now I'll zoom in in a minute I'll show you what they actually look like up close because the details that came out on the printer are way better than I thought they would um, th now the reason I've also made one of these or I've made quite a few of them uh, is because I couldn't buy one so if you're in the same predicament as me don't worry uh, if you're after one um, if you go to my channel, go to the about section, uh, that my email will be in there, so you can just drop me a, an email and uh, we, I can sort you out. Uh, the What I'm going to do though in this video is show you how I go from A to B, sort of nothing to something. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. Okay guys, so I'm going to start this video with this. right? So this is what that corridor is and what it looks like. Um, obviously it's absolutely tiny. So you've got the... it goes against the loco. <laughs> now on the Graham Farish one there's some little lugs that come off the back. I didn't model those in because what I wanted to do was not have those modelled on basically. This for me, put an, you glue it on and that's it, job done. You could probably use some black tack. Um, it's like white tack or blue tack, but it's black. Uh, anywho, this is what it is that we're looking at here, and it is absolutely tiny. Um, but I was absolutely amazed. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do now is just flash up the real image of the front of a loco. Okay, and then we'll come back to this. So that's what we got. And then I'll actually flash to the Graham Farish image now of the uh, the 150 because that's the bit I was missing and then we'll come back so you can see it's it's damn near perfect like I, I think it's it's pretty good and the top here is actually rounded more on the on the back there so anyway who that's that that's an overview of what we've got that's what we've accomplished so now I'm gonna I'm doing this about us about face but I'll show you how it all begins I'm after a corridor, aren't I, for a class 150. So the first thing I'll do is look for a class 50. I go on images, I'm looking for a class 50. There's plenty of class 50s here. Um, we could go to this picture here. That's lovely, isn't it? We'll open that in a new tab. And it's not the best of quality pictures, so I just keep looking till I've got high res picture where I can sort of zoom in. So how's that one? A bit better. Taunting trains. No, it's still not good. So hunt around till you find yourself a decent photo. Something that you're trying to model. Now I'll go for this one. I think this is the one I actually did use. There we go. Now now this gives you a good idea roughly of what you're looking at. So there's a piece here, I would imagine that locks in the corridor when it's, it's it probably hinged this side and then it locks it in there and that's a handle probably for someone to move it. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I don't know that much about trains, <laughs> but I'm learning. Uh, so you can see what we've got here. So what we'll do is, I'll say, you can save that image to wherever you want. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is open up a program called Fusion 360. Uh, you can download it free off their website. Um, there is a way, but you can get it off, the, off of them. I think Autodesk make it. So you've saved your picture from the internet. Then what you want to do is go up here where it says insert, click the drop down arrow, and then you've got canvas. So I'm going to click canvas, and I'm going to go to from my computer, and oh look, there's there's the picture that I want so I'm just going to open that and then I'm going to what it's going to ask you is where where do you want it so which plane or which axis plane do you want it on so uh, x y or z so I'm going to select this one and that's too small so I'm going to make that bigger 
you can make it whatever size you want. Uh, I'm going to make it ten times bigger, something like that. And it's in. Now, the reason that's in the program is so that I can just look at it when I'm making something. It's just far easier than actually um, flicking between like the internet and the program, so it's there. Now, the, the, the next thing is we're going to start making it. So I'm going to go up here, uh, create sketch. All right, and then here, can you see it's asking whether you want X, Y, or Z again? So what I'm also going to do is build it on, on that, that plane. So there we go. Uh, and we can start building. So I'm going to put, I'm going to press L. Well, what you can do up here, click line. I'm not pressing L now. I'm, I'm just doing the old, the old fashioned way. I've got shortcuts basically. So click line and then you start drawing. So let's say, I don't know, the bottom of it is about that. I, I measure this stuff, but you, you know, you can go into this as much as you want. Like that, like that. Uh, and it's just literally click where you want a line. So let's just imagine that's the corridor. Okay, so you've got basically a flat object. It's like, well, what do I do with that? And this is where it gets interesting because if you press E, the letter E, now um, it'll probably come up like this. It comes up with a thing called extrude. So E for extrude. Now you click on the sketch, if you like, and you see this little arrow. Well, I can start pulling it out now. Um, say 10 mil, press enter. And we've got ourselves a little boxy type thing. And, and basically, you just keep going until you've got the shape that you're after. So you go up there, you press line again, and you click on a face that you want to start building on. Um, so we, we're going to, I don't know, 3 mil. I want to show you this because basically this is all you do to start making something. And you just start from somewhere. I'm not going to be too um, accurate with this. But you see there, once you join up something, so like lines to lines to lines, it basically makes a, a volume, uh, an area that you can manipulate. So what I'll do is I'm going to press E again, E, and now it's ask extrude comes up and it's like oh oh well I can select that bit, or I can select that bit, or I can select that or that. So we're going to select that, and I'm actually instead of pulling it out, I'm going to push it through, and then press Enter, and it's cut hole. So this is how I make my models. Um, this is a very crude way of showing you, but this is it in general, that's what I do. So, I've messed around a lot with this, and I'll show you what I have made, because this is what I've done to make my corridor. So, this over here, this is what I've made from pushing and pulling a block, basically, until it comes to the right shape. So, you know, you can make a little circle and extrude it in 0.3 of a mil, and there you go, you've got a little a recess hole. Um, so yeah, if there's anything else you, you're not sure about on Fusion 360, it's not really a tutorial as such, I just wanted to show you, it's fairly straightforward, you just got to get used to the controls. So when I was building that, I had this next to it, see? So I had the, gray, the new Graham Farish model literally just sat there, and I was just like, oh, that looks about right, that looks about right. Um, what you really want to do though is the first thing you make or you want to you want to make sure you measure the actual model so let's say this is like 9 mil from that point to over here or or, or should we say this point to over here make sure that's what your model is um, you want to start off making it the size that you're after otherwise things will get very hard to do later on so you get to the point where you've made your model I'll just get rid of so actually this might help you over on this menu when you start making stuff you'll get lots of sketches that appear you can show them all um, I've got a lot of sketches going on here so that's just basically processes of how you got to the model this body thing here um, they're just various ones that I've got this their bodies that is classed as a body, this one thing here, this one solid object. I've got a few on there. So this canvas, so I'm going to get rid of, uh, yeah, get rid of that one. 
and then we've got the original there. So I'm getting rid of the canvases so you can see this. Now, this is the finished item and I'm pretty happy with it. So really the next thing to do is to print, well what we want to do is print it, right? So that what we need to do is save this file, save, save the files as you go. Um, but what we're going to do is go up here, up to file, and we're going to go down to 3D print. Now, if I just hover the mouse over the object, it kind of highlights it. So just click on it, and it should all go blue if it's one object, one body. So that object there, everything blue is going to be saved as a printable kind of formatty thing. Uh, an STL in our case. So on this drop down menu over here, uh, we've made our selection, that's the body, and then going down to STL binary, I don't know what that one is. I kind of know what that is. I don't know what the difference is between these, but I always select that one. Uh, millimeters, preview mesh, well, that basically just shows you what the computer's seen, so don't worry about that. Refinement, I always have it on high. Um, and then output here. It says send to 3D print utility. Don't do that. Untick it. Okay, so then now the next thing that's going to happen is you'll click OK and it'll basically make you save the file. So you can see I've done a, a few attempts here. So this would be like uh, my YouTube video model. Um, and it's going to save it as an STL file, so that's the format that most 3D model files will come in. So you save that. So the next thing you're going to want to do um, is open up, in my case I've got a resin 3D printer. Um, I don't think this thing's even possible to print as FTM. Don't worry if I'm losing your terminology. The resin printers are just basically the only only in every... It's amazing for Engage. I don't... I, I can't fathom using anything else. I've got other printers, but these resin printers, and mine's only 2K by the way, if you if you want to know. Um, they are absolutely amazing. Okay, so you've made a file now that you want to print. Now the next thing to do is open, open up a program called Lychee Slicer. That's what I use. Um, I've got an Anycubic Photon Mono SE printer, and it comes with the Photon Workshop software in order for you to do this. However, I prefer using this software because it's brilliant. It's really um, intuitive. It just makes sense. So when you open up the program, again this is free to download for the time being, hopefully that won't change. Um, you can basically, you're going to you're gonna have to open the file. So I'm going to add a file and then we're going to go to, um, where is it? The YouTube video model and it pops it straight in the program here. And there she is. But we're not done yet, boys and girls. Uh, we have got to orientate this best for printing. Now, many people will say different things. Um, I've already printed this, so I know how it works. So uh, basically, let me do that again. <laughs> I select the model, goes blue, a bit like Fusion. So it's going to stay blue now I've selected it, and I think we were on that, weren't we? So, you know, you can move it around. Okay. Now, the other thing here is rotate. So I want to rotate this. Now this... Hopefully this won't confuse you too much. Just play around with it. <clears throat> this green one here is the one I'm interested in, because I want to rotate it like this. I'm just clicking and dragging. Now I'm going to get it close to where I want. And at the bottom of the screen where it says rotate, you'll see X, Y, Z. You'll see the numbers change. Are you ready for this? Boom. There. <clears throat> so I know I've just moved that 85.48 degrees along the green axis there. Well, I actually want 90. Um, there's probably an easy way to do this, but I'm going to select that and put 90. Okay? And press enter. So I'm going to click off the screen just here. And it's deselected it. Now, I'm going to click on it again. And I'm going to go to move, and I'm going to set the blue arrow and go up, deselect it, and we're going to go right up to the top where it says prepare, 
and this is completely up to you. You've got light, medium, heavy supports, or whatever. Uh, I'm going to select light supports, and I'm going to go right under here. This might not make too, too, too much sense, but this is a part of the process not many people know about because I'm selecting the model by the way, uh, and it's gone blue. <clears throat> You've got to basically print this thing upside down. So when this prints, it's going to the first the way these printers work is they print in layers so this grid down here is where the first layer would be then it'll go two three four five six seven eight I'll show you that in a second um, but what I'm going to do quickly here is just put supports on various parts of the model I've done this a lot so I know the key points that help make a model successful uh, because what you what you're basically doing is just imagine this thing is made of jelly and you've got to kind of support it with little stilts in this this orientation that's the easiest way I could explain it really I again this this video is probably gonna turn out really long but I really want you guys to see what's involved now I will help out people print things if they're willing to basically cover my time of doing so because if you've got a full-on, I don't know, loco or, or something, um, it can take a very long time to support the model in such a way that it will not fail a print. Now, this this isn't perfect. I'm just showing you roughly how many supports would be needed. I'm literally just clicking these on here. So that's the supports I think we are going to need. Now the reason it's so high off the bed at the minute, and I'll show you this, is because it's so I can get under there and see, and it's so that these don't twist when they're going up. I'm not going to, this ain't a tutorial for lychee slicer either, um, this is just showing you what happens. So we've done a prepare, now I'm going to go back to layout here, click on that, and that I'm going to move it down again but the supports are still there. So these little arrow-headed things are called supports. And I'm gonna go as low as I possibly can, okay? Because the reason for that is, that's too low. That's probably about there I would have it. Lower the better. And the reason being is your print time on resin printers is dependent upon height of the object. So if you've got a chuffing great big loco and it's diet this so this is my build volume here and you've got a, a, a loco that fills that void. Well I I've not even actually printed up here, but it would probably take t twelve hours maybe, maybe longer to get up there. Uh, so we've got a model, it's supported. I hope I'm not missing anything here. Um, so you've got You've got a wheel button on your mouse to zoom in and out. And now if you press the wheel mouse down, you can move it around. Uh, the right hand button rotates it. And then your left hand button would, would select stuff. Um, I forgot to say about all that, didn't I? Right, so the next thing to do is we've got one there. Now what I want to do, I've selected it. And I'm going to, whilst it's selected, press Alt. Holding Alt and press D. And another one's just coming to screen. And I'm going to keep pressing, holding alt and pressing D, 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 D. Basically, that multiplies the object. So, as it puts them in. Ta da, we've got loads in there, you just can't see them. So, the next thing, I'm going to go down here and click Range All. And it'll just fan them out across the bed. That was a good guess, wasn't it, on numbers? Right, so we've got, uh, what's that, for 15 of them to print. Uh, so, We've got all of those. I'm happy with how they look and how they're supported. And I like having the the bottom there, just one piece. It allows you to scrape it off the build plate eventually. Now, before we go to the next stage, I'll just show you this. Uh, export. I've just clicked export, okay. So we're now on the final stage. Now, over here on the right, there's this slidey bar. So if we zoom in,
basically from the bottom this is the first layer second third fourth fifth you know it goes on and on and on or layer 10 is where that orange is on the model so it will continuously print these are all layers that it's basically uh, laminating on as it goes up and up and up until the point where it's finished so what you're looking at here would be upside down in the printer so it would look in the printer oh gosh how do we do this let's go to simulator there we go that's handy isn't it this is our printer this is our fake printer so what happens on these printers is it'll print the first layer then it'll go up and then go down up down and every time it does that it's putting more resin in and it puts another layer of resin on until the point where it keeps moving up and up and up and down it does this all the way through and then the last layer it's like done so you can see it's all printing upside down so those supports are really important not only to support the model because it's going to be kind of like a jelly state until you actually cure it uh, but they also hold it to this mass there's a plate above all this that's moving it up and down which you can't see it's not showing that uh, where is it is that helping so it will come out the bed like this so I'm hoping, I'm hoping this video really helps so we've got an export there um, I'll go back to that so the next thing you want to do that's my type of printer that is my printer select your printer from the list uh, default 50 um whatever that is um, it is just what it is I don't really change any of the settings I just make the models and print them and if they don't work then I cry a little bit I try and change the orientation because sometimes you'll get failed prints um, but really all you do is you can click export uh, slices to file wait for this little window to finish give it a few seconds okay so when it's finished click continue uh, it'll ask you where you want to save that file because now what it's asking you is where do you want to save this file that's going to allow, allow um, you, this is the file that you put in the printer basically so you need to save it somewhere uh, because eventually what you need to do really is put this on a USB stick so I'm going to save it here save and this what you've seen on the screen is what the printer does it's very quick because it's not um, it's not uh, it's not much of a model so we'll open the folder that is just done and our file is just there the one that's selected so you'd you know copy it and then what you do is you go to your USB drive and there you go a little Kingston and then you put it in here literally that's it copy and paste it in there and it's shown as a sliced file and that's it um, all you do is you go turn your printer on you put a USB stick in and press print okay so whilst it's printing um, it'll take it might take an hour to print something like that what what you've got to do though after you've printed your model is clean it uh, you'll have to remove it from the bed which a knife or a scraper will take off the, the bed that it's just been basically um, adhered to whilst the printing process was going on and I'll just show you this because I haven't got one of these I just made my own setup but what this is the washing cure by any cubic um, <clears throat> it allows you to basically put your model in a vat of isopropyl alcohol to clean off the resin that's going to be not cured on your model uh, and then what you're going to be doing is curing the clean print with a UV light so on this this cure station all those dots are basically UV LEDs now the way I did it is I, I wanted to show you this because this is the proper way of doing it it looks really nice um, I've basically just got a, a UV floodlight that's I've made a little turntable out of an old Pico turntable <laughs> that holds all my bits and I just shine light in it and spin it around with a little motor but you still have to clean the parts the better you can clean those parts um, well the better really because if we 
what we'll do is we'll come off the screen now. So on, on these, when you are printing them, those tiny little holes, if there was some resin left over in them holes, it would cure in those holes and you'd lose the detail. Um, so you really have to be very careful with how you clean the parts. Uh, you can see actually on the back here, these these are just uh, where the light's catching it and didn't spray the paint. Um, that's Those little dots are where the supports were on this. It's, it's dead flat. Um, but that's it guys. Um, what I'll do, I think, I'll just show you me gluing one on, because I've got to glue one of these onto the, I think it's the power car or the, or the dummy, either or 50-50. So I'll show you that. Okay, so here's the loco. Now the corridor itself needs to sit, <laughs> it's very fiddly work, on here. Um, I opted not to model the hole. Uh, there's little bits that I could have put on the back of this to basically put into those little holes. I opted against that and that's where it's going to sit. Uh, and all I'm going to do is put some super glue on the train and stick it on. So yeah, I've just got a little cocktail stick with a touch of super glue on it. Be very careful here. That's probably a little bit too much super glue over there. Hence why earlier I said possibly using blue, uh, black tack. then it's removable if you ever had to. And then just get the old faithful, my uh, tweezers, drop it on. I'm not pushing it down because I want to be able to move it around a bit. And I'm pretty happy with that actually. Yeah, that's it. It's on. I just let it dry. I'm not going to push it around or anything. Um, but that's it, guys. Um, <laughs> that's how you go from beginning to end. And I'm, I'm really hoping you can see the details there of of it. There. I mean, how cool does that look? That's really cool. So guys, um, that's it really for putting the corridor on. Um, I will just say though, when I printed the parts, I cleaned them with isopropyl alcohol, I then cured them with the UV light, uh, and then what I did was I used my tiny little airbrush and I thinned down some paint and I sprayed them matte black. This was a black resin that I printed um, unfortunately, I didn't actually get the printing process on the camera, sorry about that, um, but I'm hoping this video gives you an all-round view of what is going on. Um, also, there's you know there's many things that you can print, so this isn't limited to just corridors. Um, I mean, this is actually a very small piece that I couldn't get, um, so I'm, I've basically been put into a corner to buy, uh, sorry, to make one. And I feel like maybe some of you guys will have the same issue. So you don't necessarily have to make your own here. Just get in touch and we can sort something out. Um, I've printed a few of them um, in case, I don't know, I need them in the future. But, you know, it is what it is. Get in touch if you want one uh, in the About section on my channel. My email's down there. Um, but let's take, go take it to the track. There's, there's obviously, As you can see, there's some other stuff I need to do, like the handrails. Um, there's some paint missing on them. Um, I will come back to that. I just wanted to get the corridors on and show you what I've managed to accomplish with a, a 3D printer, really. Um, if you are going for a 3D printer, I can highly recommend a resin 3D printer. Um, mine is the one shown in the description. So it's the Anycubic Photon Mono SE, a bit of a mouthful. The mono bit is important, though, because it basically it means each layer is going to be faster because it's got a better way of curing that layer. 
Um, so as long as you get a mono type, it's the screen where it flashes the image per layer. If you get one with a mono, it'd be much quicker. Um, so that's what I would advise. Mine is only a 2K, um, I looked it up, it's a 2K resolution printer. And they're coming out, I know there's a 4K type printer out there now, and there's probably even an 8K or something silly. Um, but as you can see, a 2K does a pretty good job. I'm very happy with this. Um, there are other things that I've done to this loco, so I've actually put a DCC chip in it. So we'll take it over to the track and we'll run it around. If you want to see how to do that, just ask in the comments and I'll show you. I, I don't think I would film it because it's kind of like in the instruction book um, of where it is. But maybe if you're struggling to get into your shell, um, then give me a shout. I, I have got myself a lovely class 101 that will probably be in a video after this. It might not be, but I'm actually fitting sound to that. I managed to get myself a... A sound chip that isn't a Hornby TTS sound chip so so I'm gonna fit sound to that so removing the shell will be the same on that if you wanted to wait for that video if you want to know anything more about this loco give me a shout basically um, I think it'll be showing it, its face again over well, let's say the next couple of months um, but yeah um, I hope you enjoyed the video and what I'll do is I'll just leave you with some running now